Ah, yes, what a beautiful specimen. Yes, they'll be the perfect experiment. The spinbotter, the unloved, unwanted child of TF2. Unless, of course, you're Valve, in which case you probably want to sleep with them. <laughs> But on a more serious note, these hackers are genuinely beginning to make the game unenjoyable, and I can't help but wonder what it could do to the player base if it continues. Is this what they want? Or do they just want attention from their fellow TF2 players? And honestly, why does Valve seem to be doing nothing about it? It's becoming increasingly annoying to play TF2 these days. Basically every game you go into you'll be having to kick two or three bots from either your team or asking the enemy team to kick theirs. And most of the time both teams will do it. Not only because they expect you to do the same for them, but also because it's boring for them to have a spinning more on their team, just as it's boring to be camped out of spawn. Unfortunately though, there are a group of even less intelligent members of society. Those who like to keep the bots on their team. I don't know if they get a kick out of getting an easy win, but who cares when you're not playing comp? So honestly, I don't have an answer for why these retarded individuals do this. Surprisingly, there is something even worse than being camped out of spawn though. And this is what I can only assume is called anti-spawn protection, or maybe just anti-spawn. Where an invisible heavy, or maybe just his gun, is just teleported into your spawn, and with seemingly infinite ammo kills you non-stop every time you spawn in. Luckily though, this is a lot less common than just your normal spin botter. Subtlety, the absolute strong point of every sniping spin botter, as they inconspicuously spin 1000 times just to snipe you straight in the head and through 50 different walls. But of course, this isn't the only thing they will do. They will always use respectful names such as... Well, you get the picture. But maybe the worst one of these is when they steal your name. Take this for example, one time I was playing a match on Lakeside, when all of a sudden I see my name plastered atop a random sniper's head. Thinking it was a spy to begin with, I ignored it, but very quickly I noticed. I don't have any of those cosmetic items. Wait, what? He just spun around and instantly shot a guy on the enemy team in the head? Oh my. They often spam chat too, to stop any other form of communication, like a British man shooting down a Nazi pigeon in 1944. But don't be fooled, these bots are not as intelligent as a man hired to shoot down pigeons off the coast of the Isle of Wight. Oh no. It is unlikely we'll find even an ounce of human intellect within the chat box when one of these disabled folk join. Well, there is one very easy and simple technique that can be used to free yourself from the grappling, grasping arms of a 12-year-old spinning teacup ride. I like to call it the vote or run strategy. It's a lot more simple than the name suggests. First, you call a vote on the hacker, and if that vote goes through, yay! You are free, and if not, you go to the chat, say bye, and run. The only place in which this tactic does not work, however, is when they do the disabled version of a Typhon organism and morph into your name, at which point you just have to run, as you will not be finding their name anywhere in the voting panel. I hope this doesn't stay around for too long, as I can't imagine that many new players will be staying for very long if as soon as they enter a new game they are instantly killed by some kid with low motor skills using a hatch client to try and make their parents love them. And even old veterans of the game are likely to stop playing, as having to do with this and many other hacks is quite an annoyance. And when the developers of a game seem to have no interest in fixing the issue, then why even try anymore?